Tales of Asylum, a new play for radio by James Follett, with Vernon Joyner, Manning Wilson, Francis de Wolf, and Cyril Shapps. Rules of Asylum. Hello, Governor's office. Main gate here. And Mr. Suskeen has arrived. Says he has an appointment to see the Governor. Hold on. Suskeen. Suskeen. Ah, yes. Uh, Ten o'clock. He's punctual, isn't he? Shall I send him along? Yes, please. With an escort? I think you're better. You know what the old man's been like since the escape. Yes? Uh, Mr. Suskeen has just arrived and he's on his way up. Oh, good. Send him straight in. And make us some coffee. Yes, sir. Will that be all? I want you to get the sanatorium plans out. We'll be needing them. Uh, is Suskeen being escorted from the main gate? Yes, sir, of course. Uh. Come. Mr. Suskeen, sir. Ah, Suskeen. How do you do? Uh, fine, thank you, Governor. Uh, send the coffee in as soon as it's ready and see that we are not disturbed. Yes, sir. Well, please sit down. Ah, oh, thank you. Had a good fight? Oh, yes, very smooth. And how's the capital? As beautiful as ever, especially at this time of the year. <laughs> as my daughter works there, I miss her. Yes, she must feel very cut off out here. Oh, she visits me occasionally, but next time I should like to visit her. That opportunity may be sooner than you expect, Governor, if there's another incident like last week's. Huh? Oh. Yes, yes. But if your mission is successful... If my mission is successful... Um, may I see your credentials, please? Mm, I was wondering when you were going to ask for them. Yeah. Well, I'm certain the main gate would have checked them. Oh, yes, they did. What do you think of our security arrangements? What I've seen so far, not much. Your guards failed to find this when they searched me. What is it? A miniature camera. I've taken several photographs of the main gate, one of your secretary in the adjoining room, the safe, and the last picture should be quite a good one of you. Oh, I see. But if you were visiting a patient, the search would have been much more thorough. More thorough than for the visit of a security officer following an escape. I could easily be someone else. Documents are simple to forge. If I can smuggle a camera into your office, a gun shouldn't be too difficult. The security relating to visitors wouldn't have made much difference in this case. As you know, he wasn't allowed visitors. No, I didn't know. That wasn't in our instructions regarding his detention. Well, I thought you knew. Who gave you that instruction? The state prosecutor's office. They rang me the day he was brought in. Didn't you query it? Look, I'm only the governor of a remote sanatorium. I don't question orders from the state prosecutor. Mm. Did they say anything about his not seeing other prisoners? No, just that he wasn't to be allowed visitors. He mixed freely with the other patients and, and shared a room with Dunsky. Dunsky? That name sounds familiar. Yeah, the novelist. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten he was in care with us. The odd thing is, Jan Valeri knew Dansky was here because he asked if he could share a room with him. He may have found out from the other prisoners. No, he knew before he was admitted. I always interview new patients in this office when they first arrived. He asked them. And you agreed? Well, I didn't see any harm in it. Dansky wasn't allowed visitors either, and well, I was worried about his health, and I still am. I thought a friend from the university might be a good idea. And you obeyed the order about Valeri not being allowed visitors? Yes, of course. Look, does it matter very much? I'm not sure. I suppose it might make my job easier, if he's had no contact with the outside world. What about letters? I was to stop them. He wasn't to send any. He wrote several, but they never went out. He didn't know that, of course. May I see them, please? Well, they've been destroyed. On whose orders? On my orders. Blocked mail is a security risk. Someone could easily make a mistake and dispatch unmailed letters. I thought you security people would approve. Why should we approve your obeying orders not issued by our department? There's nothing in regulations about the disposal of letters written by patients who aren't allowed to send them. About your camera, I'll have the guards who checked you stopped a month's pay. And make them resentful. Ah, that would only make them less alert. Now, look here, Suskeen. I'm the governor of the sanatorium, and my methods, whether you... Come... Sir. Oh. Ah, uh, those are the plans. Yes, sir. Thank you. That'll be all. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, you were about to say something about your methods. Yes, I. I'm sorry I spoke like that. I. I've been under a considerable strain lately. So have we all, Governor. Yes, of course. 
Well, I must accept full responsibility for what's happened. The security department is not interested in who is to blame for Valeria's escape. At least not yet. We have to find out how he escaped in the first place and how to prevent such a thing happening again. Now, have you any private theories? You've read my report. Of course, but haven't you any ideas at all? No. I promise not to mention any weakness in your security system when making my report. I should have thought you were quite capable of finding out any weaknesses for yourself. I shall, but your cooperation can save me much time and trouble. Are you suggesting that I'm being uncooperative? Of course not, Governor. It's just that your knowledge would be invaluable to my investigation. Mm. Well, you've only to look at these plans to see how good our security methods are. If you don't mind, Governor, I'll decide whether they are good or not. Hmm. Uh, is this the main accommodation, Buck? Yes. And this is the outer wall. It's nearly ten metres high. Walls can be climbed. With electrified barbed wire along the top. Of which a carpet could be thrown over. Well. Have you any anti-tunnel measures? Yes. There are several underground microphones placed around the wall. Also, would-be tunnellers would have a problem with the subsoil. It's heavy clay, quite a different colour from the topsoil. A tunnel would be impossible. Unlikely, perhaps, but nothing is impossible to a determined man. And Valeri does appear to have been determined. If there is a tunnel, we'd have found the exit. We searched the whole area around the sanatorium. I saw the woods and thickets as I came in. It wouldn't be too difficult to conceal a tunnel opening. I'm sure my men would not miss a tunnel. They missed my camera. Well, that's different. So's this escape. It's the first from one of our maximum security sanatoria, and there might be another. Impossible. Why? An escape method exists, and until we find it, it can be used again. Are all the prisoners housed in this block? We prefer to call them patients. Which was Valeri's room? The one he shared with Dansky? Uh, this one. Hmm. I'd like a word with Dansky. But first, I'll look around the building and talk to the guards. My return flight leaves at four o'clock. That gives me uh, nearly six hours to formulate my report. Sir Skeen, over here. Ah, good of you to meet me, sir. Sorry the flight was delayed. Been waiting long. Get in. How did it go? Uh, not too good, I'm afraid, sir. The governor's good at his job and he obeys all the rules to the letter. No news from the police. No, not a trace of him. At least he hasn't turned up in the West. Uh, without food or money, he can't have got far in two weeks. Unless he had help, outside help. His friends wouldn't be able to help him even if they wanted to. The state prosecutor's office have had them under surveillance for some time now. Since before the escape? Yes. It seems that Valeri provided the state prosecutor with a great deal of information on them during his interrogation. That's why he only received a three-year sentence. So, the state prosecutor's office is getting efficient. You know who's in charge there now? Yes, General Nero. He's getting to be a damn nuisance. He's been pestering me. Why? They're saying, what's the point of securing convictions if we can't keep them locked up? Oh. From what I've heard on the grapevine, it seems there are a lot of arrests due in the near future. This escapes just the excuse the state prosecutor needs to demand maximum sentences in the courts. You know what I mean, don't you? Yes. Blasted vultures. This whole business is a confounded nuisance. I was hoping you might have something for next month's inquiry. I said I had no idea how he escaped. I didn't say I had no idea as to how to find out. Then you do have an idea. Uh, not yet, but I have a scheme in mind. This escape is on the surface impossible, unique if you like. Mm. The escapee must be a unique sort of person. Therefore, we must evolve unorthodox methods for reconstructing his escape. Now that seems reasonable. What do you propose? I, I, I want to learn everything I can about him. At the moment, he's nothing to me, a, a name and number on a file. I want to find out his likes and dislikes. I want to read all his written, subversive or otherwise. I, I want to feel I know and understand him completely. I want to think as he does. In short, I, I want to become him, an extension of his personality. How do you intend setting about such a task? Well, firstly, by talking to his girlfriend. He didn't have one. You've seen his record card. I've also seen his photograph. That's why I think he had a girlfriend. Find her, and you find Jan Valeri. Now, that's a job for the police. We're only responsible for the running of the sanatoria and their security. You should know that. All I know is that Valeri had outside help with this escape. That means there was a breach of security. A few questions among his friends. I can't allow you to go around questioning Valeri's friends. <laughs> if Nero's building up cases against them, we'd only be treading on his toes. He's trodden on ours. How? 
he told the sanatorium not to allow Valeri to receive or send mail. He went directly to the governor instead of going through us, through the normal channel. Yes, Suskin, but Nero is a powerful man. We are only a minor department in the health ministry. I'm sorry, but I can't allow you to question Valeri's friends. All right, I'll content myself with looking for his girlfriend. There is no girlfriend. His record card. As our record cards are based on information provided by the state prosecutor's office, General Nero can hardly object to my looking for someone who, according to his own department, doesn't exist. I suppose not. Where will you start looking? I don't know yet. I haven't given it much thought. How about that building on the right? But the university library? Why? That's where Valeria was arrested. He'd only enrolled about a month before his arrest, and he then used it fairly frequently. He made it easy for the police to keep tabs on him. Maybe that's where he met this girlfriend you're so convinced he had. Good morning, miss. I was wondering if I could enroll. Only students, graduates and lecturers can belong to the library. I'm a lecturer. Jan Valeri. You can call me Jan. You'll have to fill in this form while I put these books back on the shelves. <laughs> you help me with my form, and I'll help you with your books. Here, let me push the trolley. Thank you. <laughs> when I was a small boy, I used to carry beautiful girls' books. Now I'm pushing them. <laughs> it's a sign of the times. You'll have to learn not to talk so much. <laughs> You'll have to teach me. Ah, where are we bound? There. Ah, the political section. The Holy of Holies. Pass the books and I'll put them on the shelves. <laughs> ah. Now, this is interesting. This book is the cornerstone of our society, yet according to the date stamps, it's only been borrowed twice this year. That's what I call a promising sign. Shh. You should be careful. Don't tell me you believe wars have ears. You never know. Perhaps they listen to what these books have to say. How boring. With <laughs> these books, yes. Do you read much? Well, I have to, until I pass my exams. I really prefer to listen to a concert on the radio. Mm, I like music, too. I've got quite a collection of Western records. Really? What are they? Oh, Frank Sinatra, modern jazz, the Beatles. The Beatles? Yes, all their LPs. <gasps> Why? Do you like them? Oh, I adore them. It's such a pity they broke up. <laughs> Look, let's have dinner this evening. I know a marvellous place not ten minutes from here by tram, and we could listen to the Beatles afterwards. At your place? Yes. Oh, I'm not sure I... <laughs> won't eat you, I promise. <laughs> I want to hold your hand. <laughs> all right, right. Marvellous. What time do you finish? Well, six o'clock, but... See you outside, then. Six o'clock. Uh... Oh, I nearly forgot. What's your name? Anna, but... Tonight, then. What about Bye. your ticket? Listen, Anna. Yes? I want you to get off at the next stop. The restaurant's just opposite. You can't miss it because of the traffic. Aren't you getting off? You're supposed to be taking me. I'll join you in there in a few minutes. There'll be some friends of mine already there. Just introduce yourself. This is stupid. Do you honestly think I'm going to walk up to a table of strangers? They're not say, strangers. Hey, they're friends. You may know some of them from the university. Anyway, I'll only be five minutes. Oh, it's too silly for words. Ah, here's your stop. Now, that's the place over there with the green paint. I'm not going into a strange place by myself. Of all the extraordinary behaviour I've Please, like Anna. I'll only be five minutes, I promise. That's as long as it takes to walk from the next stop. Ah, here's Jan. Hello, Jan. Come on, make room for him. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Zoe. Hello, Anna. Hello. Have they been looking after you? I think they're trying to get me drunk. <laughs> oh, I told you they were friends. You'll have to watch Alex, though. Uh, Anna, if you want to watch me, you'll be most welcome. But you'll have to let me watch you in return. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Zoe. Anna, you've met Zoe, haven't you? Five years ago, she was one of my star students. Now she wastes her time working in the university's personnel department. Anna and I have met, but only across the counter in the library, never socially. And Alex here lectures on... Zoology, my dear. You must come to the zoo sometime and see my giant panda. Uh, careful, Anna. <laughs> Alex has picked up a lot of habits from his animals, especially the wolves. <laughs> I have an appreciation of beauty not shared by callow lecturers. <laughs> oh, this is a nice place. I've heard of it, but I always thought it was expensive. Oh, it is, for party members. The manager charges them double, so they stay away and hatch plots to have him removed. <laughs> They've never succeeded, nor are they likely to. Is the food good? Oh, excellent. Mm. Yes, we always have a good meal, good conversation, good wine, and we earn good money. We are the cosmopolitans of socialism. 
The founders of this state dreamt that one day they'd be citizens like us, well-clothed, fed and educated, ignorant of the wretched poverty they knew, and here we are. Now they hate our guts. Is that why you're scared? Scared? Who's scared? Why didn't you want to be seen coming in here with me? Why all that silly performance of getting off the tram further down the road? Mm, uh, a little rule of our circle, my dear. Nobody ever enters or leaves in company. All our gatherings in here are by chance. We wouldn't like the authorities to think we're plotting against them, would we? And are you? <laughs> <laughs> we're just a small group that enjoys each other's company. We even put up with Alex's jokes. Mm, I heard a marvellous one today about the party chair. Oh. It's because his jokes are so bad that the police don't arrest him. They couldn't bear to have to repeat them in court. <laughs> <laughs> now, this music is more to my liking. As it is obvious that you have no wish to hear my joke, perhaps, Anna, you'll do me the honour of this dance? Tell him to find someone his own age. I'd love to, Alex. It's nice to be asked properly for once. Those courtly manners have led many a girl to destruction. <laughs> I shall think of a suitable reply during the dance. Come, Anna. She's rather nice, young. Yes. Are you certain about her father? Mm, positive. It's all in her personal file. Anyway, you were right about her passion for the Beatles. I couldn't hold her off when I mentioned I had some of their records. <laughs> See, you look after them. I don't want them scratched. It's a lucky coincidence about her father. The question is, can we make use of it? She's our only hope. I had another letter from Dansky. He's finished the painting. God, he must have worked fast. He said it's about the same size as his last painting. That means some 60,000 words, at least 200 sheets, handwritten, so at least his London publishers won't be in any doubt about it being his work. If we can get it to them. Alex's trip to London with the giant panda has been fixed for the third of next month. Third? That only gives us three weeks. <laughs> He's even fitted a false bottom to its feeding trough. <laughs> so now it's up to me. You and the girl. Jan, please be careful. I wouldn't want you or Anna to get hurt. It's not worth it. Not for a book that may never be published in this country. Well, I think it is worth it. And anyway, nobody's going to get hurt. Anna. Mm? Anna, I want to talk to you. In the morning. Go to sleep. I've got to tell you now. I've been trying to screw up the courage all week. <sighs> what is it? You're not married, are you? No. Look, you must understand. I do love you. Yes, all right. But what is it? When I first met you in the library, it wasn't just a chance meeting. I arranged it. I've been waiting some time for the chance to catch you alone. What's wrong with that? I only wanted to get to know you because of your father. Daddy? I don't understand. Oh, God, this is difficult. I wanted you to do something. Something dangerous. Something I couldn't ask you to do now. Will you please tell me what you're talking about? You've heard of Ivan Dansky? The novelist? Yes, of course. Your father's the governor of the place where Dansky is imprisoned. But Daddy's place is a sanatorium for the mentally sick. It's a prison. Well, it... A place where the state can shut away dissidents. People with political views that the state doesn't share. It can't be. I've been there many times. Have you ever met any of the inmates? No. Daddy always says they could be dangerous. Anyway, he's much too kind-hearted to run a prison. They're not ill-treated in the physical sense. They're just removed from society for corrective treatment. What did Dansky do, then? He didn't do anything. Oh, they don't lock people up for nothing. His books offended the government. Well, that's stupid. I've read all three. They wouldn't offend anyone. He's written five books. The last two weren't published in this country. Nor are they ever likely to be. What has all this got to do with me? Dansky's written another book in your father's sanatorium. Is it good? I don't know. Oh. You see, it hasn't been published. The manuscript is still with Dansky. Only one person apart from him has seen it. I think I'm beginning to understand. That's why you must believe me when I say I love you. After all the lies and deceits of the past two weeks... <sighs> two weeks? My God! And expect me to believe you now? Just because you want me to do something I for you? I don't want you to do anything. Only believe me now. Where are you going? I'm packing my things. Surely you don't think well, I'm going come to... back to bed. You'll freeze. <laughs> Anna, please. Don't, don't touch me. Look, come back to bed. It's cold. 
Hannah, come on. There. There. That's a good girl. No. Now listen, Anna. Please listen. You must let me explain. There's nothing to explain. I understand. I, I wasn't the cooperative little mouse you thought. I never thought of you like that. Here. Let me pull the blankets up. There. That's better. This book could get your father into trouble. Oh, how? Dansky wasn't supposed to have writing materials. If we could get the book out of the sanatorium, who's to know that he wrote it after his arrest? Well, I could warn Daddy to look for the manuscript. I could Anna, get Dansky and everyone... don't you care? You said yourself his books were harmless. I haven't read the last two. The ones I read didn't attack the state. That's the fashionable thing to do now, isn't it? Write offensive books for a bit of cheap notoriety. Anna, he was expelled from the writers' union. He couldn't work. No one was allowed to employ him. Don't you have any respect for the idea of freedom of speech? I have an even greater respect for truth, something you don't seem to have. Oh, you're just being absurd. Am I? Because I respect the principles of people like my father who fought Hitler. So you and your smart friends could go around sneering at every achievement. Now you sound like a politician. Well, they could keep Dansky in prison for the rest of his life if they want to. What? The idea is to stop him writing. We want to show them that holding a man doesn't work. They can't shoot us now. They can't jail us because the freedom we want is written into the Constitution anyway. Our hope is that eventually they'll have no option but to leave us alone. Just think. The rest of his life. Even murderers get better treatment. At least they get a fixed term of imprisonment. The rest of his life? If they so wish. To them, he's a greater threat than any murderer. How did he write the book if he wasn't allowed writing materials? Your father allowed him to have painting materials. He used black oil paint mixed with turpentine for ink and made a pen out of a brush. What about paper? That was easy. They let him have paper for practice and brush sketches. He sounds clever. He was desperate. You can't imagine what it must be like for a man like Dansky not to be able to write. Well, how do you know all this? From someone who's just been released. How big is this manuscript? About 200 sheets. And you went to all that trouble? Picking me up like that because you thought I'd help you smuggle it out. Oh, I suppose it was Zoe who told you who my father was. I've been honest with you, Hannah, but the less you know, the better. How did you think I could get it out? Surely you didn't think Daddy just hand it over? No. We thought that perhaps you could ask your father if you might see Dansky to discuss his early books. Well, <laughs> After all, you are a librarian. I see. And if Daddy's place is a prison, as you call it, wouldn't they search me? Or don't they search all visitors? Well, they're hardly likely to search the governor's daughter, are they? I'm sorry, miss, but I'll have to search you. But I'm the governor's daughter. Oh, yes, I know, miss, but I'll have to search you just the same. I'm certain if you were to call my father, he'd say you needn't bother. I don't think so, miss. Your father is very strict about rules, and Dansky is a special patient. We have to be careful. Do I have to go through all this again later on? No, of course not, miss. There wouldn't be much point in searching you after you'd seen him, would there? Uh, there's just a few books for him. My father said it'd be all right. Yes, he told me. Uh, if you would pass me your clothes, please. Thank you. Thank you. You can tell where you come from. Clothes like these are unheard of out here. Good. And now I must examine your hair. Oh, Really? I'm sorry, miss. It's the rule. Oh, I don't suppose you get many visitors if they have to go through this every time. No, not many. Well, everything seems to be in order. You can get dressed now and I'll show you to his room. Visitor for you, Ivan. Who is it? Oh, who is she? The governor's daughter. I thought I wasn't allowed visitors. You thought wrong. Another time... I've reached an important stage in the development of this painting. You've been staring at that empty canvas all week. I've no wish to see anyone. Now, don't be awkward, Ivan. She's come all the way from the capital to see you. Don't let him frighten you, miss. He can be a bit funny at times, but he's all right, really. I'll come back in uh, ten minutes. Will that be long enough? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> My name's Anna. I've come to talk about your books. I'm a librarian. Oh, now, where's that 
cube of Venetian red. Oh, I've got it here somewhere. Oh, is this what you're looking for? What? This. Oh, oh yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Everything's always in such a mess. Oh, please don't worry. I wasn't. It's rather homely. Is it? I wouldn't know. Those paintings are very good. I didn't know the governor had a daughter. I don't live here. I'm a librarian at Capital University, where you used to lecture. Why did your father send you to see me? Not allowed visitors. He didn't. When I heard you were here, I begged him to let me see you. I'm doing our modern writers for my final examinations. Name three works by Toulouse. Oh, um, The Tiger Lily, Red Snow and um, Spring Harvest. Have you read them? Of course. What do you think of Delusion? An overrated writer. I've also read your books. I specialise in overrated writers. <laughs> I asked for that. Oh, please forgive me. One is naturally suspicious. Few people bother with an old man who once wrote some rather poor books. I thought they were very good. No? I haven't read the last two. Why were they banned? How do you know they were banned? It wasn't in the newspaper? Jan told me. Jan Valeri, your friend. It was he who sent me. Um, I'm forgetting my manners. Your father's quite a reasonable man. He allows me these painting materials. Oh, would you like some tea? It was because of my father that Jan picked me up. I make excellent tea. One has the time to determine the precise ingredients. He doesn't care about me. Lemon? I've ascertained that a six-millimeter slice imparts the best flavor for perfect tea. Did he use people when you knew him? Of course, as one proceeds through a lemon and the slices grow larger, so one must reduce the thickness of each slice. He knew he wouldn't be allowed to visit you, so he used me. Being used is something we must all endure. Though why your father should be using you, I can't imagine. It's nothing to do with my father. I've told you the truth. I have a message for you from Jan. Do you really expect me to believe you? First of all, you tell me you wanted to see me because you were studying for your finals. Now you're trying to tell me that you've travelled halfway across the country just to give me a message from a friend I've never heard of. I'm sorry I didn't tell you the truth right away. I couldn't think of what to say at first. But you must believe me now. What is this message? Jan's heard about the black and white painting. Oh? He says he could arrange to have it exhibited in London. If you agree, I'm to take it back with me. Uh, oh, uh, excuse me, the kettle. Tell me, uh, do you trust this Jan? I don't know. Thank you. I think so. Ah. I've learned to trust no one these days. I can understand. Oh, I've brought you some books. What? Jan chose them here. Oh. He's written an inscription inside this one. It's unsigned, of course. Do you recognize the handwriting? Uh, perhaps. Uh, will you excuse me while I look at them, please? There's some more paintings in the corner. Thank you. Mm. Uh, uh. Beautiful. Who's this? Huh? Oh, uh, my daughter. I paint from memory. She'd look older now. One's memories are frozen, like a jammed movie film. Oh. oh what's the matter, child? This picture. It's Jan. Yes, it's Jan. <gasps> Dear Jan, we spent many hours discussing this book. Anna, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. <sighs> Anna, my child, what is it? It's this... this picture. Do you love him? I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Oh, you mustn't blame him, Anna. Ian is not the sort who would want to hurt anyone. I think I understand him now. You don't love someone merely because you understand them. 
I, I suppose not. Anna, may I give you some friendly advice? What? Don't expect to find happiness with Jan. Not in this country. He won't be tolerated much longer. The new arrivals here are far less extreme than Jan. Few uh, idealistic poets. Believe me, Anna, he's in real danger. Ah, it's always the women who suffer. This must be your wife. She looks sad. Is that how you remember her? Yes. Each painting takes a month. And each month crystallizes another memory, tempering it against time. <laughs> time. They say time heals all wounds. But it doesn't. How much longer will you be kept here? Who knows? Another hundred paintings, two hundred. Perhaps I'll be cured when I run out of memories. Uh, would you like one of them? Oh, I'd love one. But I might choose a favourite. <laughs> My favourite's always the next one. Now, let me choose for you. Uh, this one? I don't know. Oh, you mustn't think too badly of him. I'd like you to have it. I treasure it always. Treasure what it represents. And uh, there's the black and white painting. No, I can't let you take it. But you must. It's an art form unpopular at the moment in this country. There are influential critics who... Please, you must let me take it. It's very important to Jan. Yes, my child, but... Is it important to you? Yes. It is now. Very important. Alex? It's me, Anna. Alex? Hello, boy. Aren't you beautiful? Is that your name? Zizi? Where's your master, Zizi? Alex? Hello, Alex. Is this your panda? Anna, we've given you up. Oh, Daddy insisted on my staying for another two days. I could hardly refuse. You'd I've better got... come in here. It's more private. That's better. We were wondering what had happened to you. I've only just got off the train. I came straight here, as Jan said. I'm not late, am I? Jan said not to be later than Tuesday. No, no, you're not late. Uh, where is it? In my bag. Ah. I read it on the train. It's marvellous. It really is. Good. You don't sound too pleased. Yeah. What's the matter? This should fit all right. Fit what? Oh, it doesn't matter. How are you taking it out of the country? It's best that you don't know. That's what Jan always says. And I went to such a lot of trouble to get it. All right. It'll be hidden in Zizi's trough. We're flying him to London tomorrow to mate with their female panda. Is that how Danskin's last books were smuggled to London? Yes, but I'm using a different method now. Last time, I hid the manuscripts behind a piece of dummy fur stuck to Zizi's stomach. <gasps> I had to keep him sedated to prevent him from scratching it off. Unfortunately, the sedatives took rather a long time to wear off. I'm afraid he disappointed the London Zoo and their panda. Oh, poor Zizi. Well, let's hope he does the trick this time. Anyway, I must find Jan and tell him Jan? I managed... Do you mean you don't know? Know what? He called at the library yesterday to see if you were back. And the police were waiting for him. Come in. Jan Valeri, sir. Would you like me to remain? Ah, oh, that's all right, Jan. Sir. Good morning, Jan. Take a seat. I've not seen you before. What happened to the other one? A cigarette? Oh. Thanks. Who are you? Oh, just another cog. But a bigger one. <laughs> what makes you think that? You wear a more expensive suit. You smoke more expensive cigarettes. And the guard called you sir. <laughs> you are perceptive. If you ever get out of this mess, you could always get a job in General Nero's department. That bastard. Well, have you ever met him? No. Or seen pictures of him? No. Then why should you think that he's a bastard? The Dansky trial. Ah, oh, yes. Dansky was a friend of yours. Was he? <laughs> you know, I was warned about you. Actually, you know, I suppose General Nero is a bit of a bastard. 
But um, he likes model trains. And anyone who likes model trains can't be all that bad. You like them, then? <laughs> Absolutely dotty about them. I was always in trouble as a boy for hanging around railway tracks. So was I. Oh, fellow enthusiast. Not now. I've outgrown such childish interests. <laughs> Not sure how to take that. You can take it how you like. My dear chap, don't be so truculent. I just want to get to know you. Everything you want to know is in that file in front of you. Ah, yes, of course. Your file. Yeah, there's quite a lot here about you. I wonder if this bit's true. What bit? Well, it's against the rules to show prisoners their own files, but um, if I don't cover the file up, there's nothing to stop you reading upside down. Jan Valeri, male, born Warsaw, 1935. Parents refugees came to this country. Oh, that's marvellous. Reading upside down print? Oh, not only that, it's back to front. I don't understand. What you read then is the back of the form. Some silly typist put the carbon paper in the wrong way round, so that the typing has come out on the back like a mirror writing. So? Well, I think that's jolly clever. The only people I know who can do that are printers. They're used to reading blocks where the printing is back to front. I used to edit a university magazine. They usually involved doing the printing as well. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The university printing machines have been these modern types for some years now, haven't they? What are they called? Offset? Offset litho. That's it, offset litho. <laughs> I can never remember these things. It's funny. I always thought that offset litho machines used ordinary plates, printed the right way around. Sure, it doesn't matter. What I really called you in for was to see if you'd like to um, have dinner with me this evening. You're welcome to Friday's stew. <laughs> Somewhere different. Why? Well, I thought it would be nice. Let me see, you've been in custody for nearly two months now. Trip out would do you good. Get some air into you. And fatten me up for the trial. <laughs> The next turning on the right, driver. Where are we going? You know this area? You know damn well I do. It's that restaurant on the left, driver. I'm not going in there. Why not? Don't play cat and mouse with me. You know very well why not. But I've gone to all this trouble. Explaining to my superiors, obtaining your release into my care for the evening, playing on this car. Don't give me that. It's your car. The driver knows you. All right, then. And so it's my car, so what? So I'm not going in. You wouldn't like some more solitary, would you? You're a bastard. <laughs> so they tell me. Ah, if you know the place, you can tell me what to avoid on the menu. Very well, then. I'll eat your food and drink your drink. But it won't make me loosen my tongue and I won't answer your questions. My dear chap, according to the other interrogators, all the vodka in this city wouldn't make you loosen your tongue. Anyway, who said I was going to ask questions? Tonight I want you to relax and enjoy yourself. <laughs> we could talk model trains. I think I prefer the solitary. <laughs> All right, driver. Uh, pick us up in two hours' time. Thank you, waiter. Uh, enjoy your meal, Jan? Quite good. Can't say the same about the company or the conversation. For an interrogator, you do a lot of talking. Anyway, you laughed at my very poor jokes. Well, that's my good reading. It's good manners to laugh at them, and bad manners to tell them. You know, I like you, Jan. You have spirit. You're not paid to like me. No, and I'm not paid to wine and dine my prisoners either. Your prisoners? By that I mean prisoners in my custody. Who are you? Yeah, this is a rum sort of place. I'm sure there's a subversive conversation going on at the next table. Did you notice the manager's expression when he first saw you? I expect he knows me by sight. Yeah, someone else seems to know you. Hmm? There's rather a nice-looking girl behind you who's been watching you in amazement ever since we came in. Where? Behind you. Blue dress, I think. It's hard to tell in this light. No, don't, don't look around. She's now pretending to be absorbed in her meal. Ah, uh -huh, she's looking up. She seems to be somewhat agitated. See her? She's getting up. Any idea who she is? No. I've never seen her before. She's trying to make up her mind what to do. Are you certain you don't know her? Yes, positive. Hello, I do believe she's coming over. Yes, yeah, she is. It should be interesting. You must know her. I've told you. I've never seen her before. Good heavens. That waiter spilled soup down. It was done on purpose. No, it was an accident, I'm sure. I saw him. He did it deliberately. Never mind. It's, it's time we were going. Wait, down. But I haven't finished my coffee. Well, swallow it down. Now, there's a good chap.
These trains really are beautiful, General. Did you build them yourself? No, oh, I haven't the time. I would have, were it not for the incompetent bunglers in my department. <laughs> what happened at the restaurant? Was he recognized? Uh-huh. By a girl. Good. That should make the interrogation easier. Oh, don't you believe it? Bungling fools. The idiot I had stationed to prevent anyone approaching the table made a complete hash of it. And the photographer didn't use a fast enough film. But that evening went quite well. Who was the girl? Oh, how should I know? But you had her followed? Nope. But that's crazy. I thought that was the... Are you questioning my methods? No. Hmm, pity. If you were, I might have explained. <laughs> anyway, the girl doesn't matter. I've decided on the date for his trial. When? Two weeks from today. But that's impossible. Why? We've still no confession. Then you must get one. Well, what do you think I've been trying to do all these weeks? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. Why not? I'm sorry? Well, you've a perfect right to be annoyed. If you have been trying, that is. You know the answer to that. You've had most of the sessions with him yourself. Huh? So I have been interfering? No, I, I, I didn't say that. You implied it? Unintentionally. You're too good an interrogator to let the unintentional word slip. I have valued your help. Oh, I have been a help. Of course. But we have got nowhere, even with my help. Two weeks. Impossible. I'd agree with you. If we continue with our present techniques. Your own orders specifically forbade direct methods. You wanted him in a presentable condition for open trial with foreign journalists present. I've got your memo on file. Oh, of course, my dear chap, of course. Who was it who said a wise man sometimes changes his mind, a foolish one never? <laughs> well, I've had to change my mind about an open trial. It's a pity, with so many of them likely to crop up in the near future. We find they're so much better for our image. There's less speculation in the foreign press. So what do you want me to do? Well, you're our most experienced interrogator. Supposing you tell me. I thought you wanted to run things. So I was interfering. I didn't mean that. I thought you might have a suggestion. I have. Chapter 6. I'm sorry, but I hardly ever get a chance to look at the manual these days. Have a look. There's a good chap. Yeah. I've always felt that instruction manuals are merely an aid to common sense and that a good man doesn't need them. A middle shelf, I think. Yeah. What uh, techniques will you use on Valeri? Now that you have a free hand... Time distortion, I think. Ah, got it. Chapter 6. An outline of time distortion interrogation methods. Precisely. <laughs> and do you think it would work? It might. That sort of answer can spell death to your promotion prospects. Will it or will it not work? I would rather have used it earlier. It needs a lot of organising. Isolating the prisoner from natural light, arranging a cooked breakfast every few hours, mm -hmm. altering clocks, mm -hmm. even his watch while he's sleeping. How quickly could you achieve disorientation? About four days. I'll start off by allowing him six-hour nights and reduce them to one-hour nights as quickly as possible. We'll give him barbiturate and his food to make sure he sleeps. After four days, he'll be living through an apparent three days for every actual day. Uh-huh. Have you ever had success with this system? Oh, often. The most difficult part is administering diet and drugs to establish a bowel movement and urination pattern compatible with his concept of time. Usually it's not necessary. Mm. Most prisoners are too confused, even after a couple of days, to notice they're not going at the customary time. Uh -huh. But Valeria's no ordinary prisoner. We have to be careful. Mm. Have we allowed him the morning paper? Oh, yes. There's been a spate of hysterical editorials recently about so-called intellectuals and writers undermining the state. I thought their screams for heads might unnerve him. They haven't. Well, I could arrange the printing of special editions with false dates. Oh, you'd go to that trouble? I needn't stress how important his confession is. Supposing we fail? We? <laughs> you mean you. And you cannot afford to fail. I shall know within a week if we can break this man. And if I think we won't succeed, then it's essential we put pressure on him by means of the girl. I said she didn't matter. But she does matter. Look, I don't know if this interrogation will work. Usually it does, but I'm not certain with Valeri. One thing I am certain of. 
is that he would break if we had his girl. They always do. You get the girl, and I'll get the confession. You will have to manage without her. In any case, I don't know who or where she is, and I care even less. But why didn't you have her followed? Oh, she's probably just an acquaintance of Valeri's. He never formed attachments. There's only his circle of friends that used to meet in the restaurant. We've nothing on any of them without Valeri's confession. She must be his girl. Valeri's not a homosexual. Well, he never entered or left the restaurant with a girl in all the months we were keeping watch on it. The girl was nothing more or less than a casual acquaintance. By not having her followed, I've ensured that she'd do what I wanted her to do. And what was that? Do you know what Valeria and I talked about in the restaurant? I told him jokes. Some of them were quite good jokes. Did you know that I was good at telling jokes? No. Did he laugh at them? That was the whole idea. What conclusion do you suppose Valeria's friends will jump to when they hear about it? Valeria doesn't know who I am. But I have no doubt that at least one of his friends will. Especially as I talked in a loud voice about model trains. Of course. They'll think Valeri's betrayed them. Precisely. I have to think ahead at all times. You, my friend, only have to worry about the next two weeks. You've had this book out over four months and you've had four reminders. Four months suspension. What? Oh, hell. Look, I've got my finals soon. Can't you make an exception? Just this once. I'm sorry, you know the rules. If you can't return books in time, I have no option but to withdraw your tickets. Oh, I don't know. I was supposed to pass my exams. Right? Yes, sir? That was a bit hard, wasn't it? Oh, you have to be with students, otherwise I'd have no books left. Are you a lecturer? No. Only students, I... lecturers and graduates can use the library. My name is Suskin. Uh, my identification. Uh, Health Ministry Security Officer. Uh, what can I do for you? I'd like to ask you a few questions about a former lecturer, Jan Valeri. Jan Valeri? Hmm. Oh, I, I thought all that was finished with weeks ago. I've already told the police everything I know. Yes, but you haven't told me. Now, there are just one or two points I'd like to go over with you. Oh, very well, then, but it'll have to be quick. I'm without an assistant at the moment, and I've all these books to go on the shelves. Did Valeri use the library frequently? Yes, but he hadn't been a member for all that long, and the police arrested him. He always went to the political section. Your people turned out all the books there when I told them, looking for messages, I expect. They left me to put them back on the shelves. They're not my people. I'm not a policeman. <laughs> you sound like one. I want you to think back carefully. In all his visits here, did Valeri ever come in with a girl? No. Are you sure? It's very important. Of course I'm sure. He never seemed to have time for girls. He was always reading, always in for books. But girls had time for him, all right. My assistant used to fall over herself to serve him. Women don't know how to behave these days in my day. Valeria was got... the intellectual sort, wasn't he? Editor of the university newspaper and that sort of thing. Oh, they're all intellectuals round here, or think they are. Half of them don't even know what the word means. Where do they all congregate in their spare time? In bed, I should think. With each other, or over sleeping and missing lectures. You're not being very helpful. Students and lecturers with intellectual aspirations usually have a coffee bar or club where they meet after hours. It's the same in most university towns. I don't see why this one should be any different. Oh, there's the fallen idol somewhere near the docks. Mm. It doesn't say much for our security if you've never heard of it. Fallen Idol. Thank you. Uh, is that a club? A grubby little restaurant, from what I've heard. Now, can I get on with my work now? Oh, uh, one last thing. Have you always worked here? Always. Twenty years now. But you do have time off. I mean, you mentioned an assistant. Perhaps she's seen Valeria with a girl. Oh, no, she couldn't help you. Unreliable sort. She's gone off sick or something and hasn't sent a doctor's certificate. Where could I find her? You'll be wasting your time. I'm the only one who knows what's going on round here. All she thinks of is Western pop groups. Besides, the day Valeria was arrested, she was away visiting her father. Well, thank you for your help. Uh, where exactly is this uh, fallen idol? How should I know? Ask one of the students. You sent for me, sir? Are you the manager? Yes. Is the food not to your satisfaction? I'd like to ask you a few questions. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Another time. I'm short-handed at the kitchen. It won't take a minute. I don't wish to sound rude, sir, but I'm certain I can tell you nothing you don't already know from your observations. I'm not a policeman. No? 
Oh, I was rather proud of my nose for them. Well, uh, uh, a security officer. Is there a difference? Not much. Well, I'm always pleased to help the police. How can I help you? Sit down. This is an odd sort of place, isn't it? Well, it's popular with students. I'm surprised they can afford it. They get special rates. Afford an idol? What idol? It's the title of a work by a British writer. Unfortunate that the name should be displayed below a photograph of the chairman. Well, it's the law. We must display our name and we must have a photograph. The authorities were unhappy about it, too. We suggested changing our name to The Quiet American. They didn't like that, either. I'm investigating the background of a former customer of yours. A former customer? Jan Valeri. Never heard of him. This was taken recently. Hmm. We have so many faces in here, I can't possibly remember them all. Well, perhaps this paper will help your memory. Hmm? Uh, no, don't, don't, uh, don't touch it. Just read it. What is it? That's your name, isn't it? Yes. And your address? Yes, what is it? It's a committal warrant to a state sanatorium. <laughs> Surprising how effectively one of these can cure bad memory. If it doesn't cure yours, we could always take you in for observation. He used to come in. I haven't seen him for some weeks now. I'd be surprised if you had. Do you know why he's not been around? I've heard there was trouble. What sort of trouble? Just trouble. One doesn't ask questions. And I'll think carefully. Was he ever in here with a girl? Yes, he was. What was she like? I, I, I don't know. Oh, come on, of course you know. Was she young? He was always in a group, never with one particular girl. And who did he come with? Except for his last visit, he always came alone and joined a party at a table. Who was he with on his last visit? A man. I don't know who it was. Well, describe him. Tall, middle-aged, ex-army probably, expensive clothes. They seem to be enjoying themselves. One of my waiters thought they were talking about model trains. Model trains? When was this? Late June, just after my holiday. Now, you must be mistaken. It couldn't be in June. Well, I spent the first week in June on the Baltic. It was definitely after my return. But it couldn't... Are you absolutely certain? Yes. But didn't you think it odd? <laughs> we're used to the unusual in here. You knew about the lady's arrest. Well, I'd heard a rumour. I assumed it was wrong. Model trains. Uh, if you've no more questions, hmm? could... Oh, uh, no, no, uh... Uh, thank you for your help. Oh, uh, you'd better pass me an ashtray. I'll burn this form. Sir Skeen, have you used a sanatorium committal warrant without entering it in the register? Why? And one of the clerks is complaining that the number of the last warrant on the pad doesn't agree with records. Do you know anything about it? Yes, I used one. But that was highly irregular. I've got a highly irregular case. It's got nothing to do with it. Who was it for? No one. I, I made it out in case the witness proved awkward. It wasn't needed. Well, lucky for you, it wasn't. What did you do with it? Burned it. You'd no right to use one in the first place. You know the procedure. I wrote it. Anyway, I thought I had a free hand. Why didn't you consult me first? Would you have approved? No. Well, there's your answer. I would have been prepared to overlook it had you made progress. Now, this interim report of yours is most unsatisfactory, so It is only interim. Supposing Nero wants to see it? Don't show it to him. He's not in charge of the health ministry. Our reports are our affair. What's so unsatisfactory about it? You've wasted a whole week looking for a non-existent girl. I don't agree that I've wasted time. I have proved that she doesn't exist. Now, that narrows down the field. Narrows it down to what? That's what I'm working on now. Don't talk in riddles. The riddles are not of my making. What sort of riddles? Valeri received a light sentence because he confessed to crimes of subversion and provided the state prosecutor with information on his friend's activities. Yes. Then how is it that Nero hasn't made any arrests yet? Well, maybe he has. No, no, no. We'd have heard about it. And he's still building up cases against them. Well, from what I've heard, Nero doesn't work like that. He grabs them first and works out a case later. How Nero runs his department is no concern of yours. All we have to do is to find out how Valeri escaped to make damn certain it doesn't happen again. And to find that out, I must talk to Valeri's friends. And I absolutely <sighs> forbid it. If Nero's watching them, he'd have my pension. And yours. He'll probably have them anyway, the rate we're going. And Nero's going to make trouble for us. He's putting pressure on our minister. Why should Valeri be so important to him? How should I know? Perhaps he wants him questioned again. 
Perhaps Valeri supplied his department with false information. Well, there could be 101 reasons. And none of them are any concern of ours. Talking to Valeri's friends would clear up one thing I'm unhappy about. What's that? The exact date Valeri was arrested. You have the file? Yes. But the manager of the restaurant which Valeri often used is convinced that he saw him in his restaurant after the date on which he was arrested. Well, you must be mistaken. No, I don't think so. Was he with anyone? Yes. Who? We didn't know. But whoever it was, he's interested in model trains. <laughs> Sounds as if you've been having your leg pulled. No. So, what do you propose doing now? Well, if I can't see Valeria's friends, I'd like to see the one person who probably knows him better than his own father or mother. And who might that be? His pre-trial interrogator. I'm sorry, that's out of the question. Why? Who do you think supervised Valeria's interrogation? One of Nero's staff, I suppose. No. It was Nero himself. No, now you... do you understand? Look, uh, am I only getting half the story about Valeri? Why is he so important? I don't know. Why should we worry? It might have some bearing on his escape. Look, Nero did the actual interrogation. Most of it. What's Nero like? Ambitious. But he's reached the top. Not quite. So, he wants to be chairman. Well, the chairman is getting on a bit. Even the paper has mentioned that he wants to spend more time with his roses. And a spectacular series of successful trials would endear Nero to the central executive. Possibly. Hmm. I'd still like to see him. No. He could answer some questions about Valeri. Which you won't get the chance to ask. Well, perhaps there was something he missed during the interrogation. Some little thing that didn't seem important at the time. He'd be grateful if I highlighted it. Forget it, Suskin. In fact, I think it would be a good idea if we were to scrap this investigation altogether and tell the inquiry that we don't know how Valeri escaped. At least we'd be telling the truth. But look, if this case is important to Nero, wouldn't he be expecting an approach from us? If we don't, he could use it against us at the inquiry. He could always say he had information on Valeri that might have been useful to us and that we didn't even bother to ask him. <sighs> Very well, then. You can see, Nero... Thank you, sir. But for God's sake, don't upset him. Don't go taking photographs of his office or anything. The thought never entered my head. Oh. Have you ever met him? No, not personally. I once heard him speak at a symposium. He seemed quite pleasant. Oh, he is. But he'd chew you up and spit you out before breakfast if he felt like it. Hmm. We'll see. Now, look, Suskin Ocean, you can't take curves at those speeds with goods trains. You derail the nuts. And you've gone through that signal. My, my control box keeps sticking. Nonsense. Model trains are just like humans. They require that delicacy of touch. Hmm. I get the distinct impression that you don't approve of my hobby. I, I didn't say that. You don't have to. Now, the art of interrogation is building as much on what a man does not say as what he does say. The difficulty is to get him to say what he doesn't want to say and then getting him to believe it. That's why I like my model trains. I can make them do exactly what I want them to do, when I want them to, and how I want them to. I see. Do you? You know, I have this feeling that you're thinking what a silly hobby I have, playing with model trains. Oh, no. I believe Goering was keen on them, too. Anyway, a man needn't feel sensitive about his interests. It uh, was my cooperation you wanted. My chief told you why I wanted to see you, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you've um, lost Valeri. Carlos. He escaped. Well, I didn't suppose that you'd let him go. Although I must admit that I was tempted to do so when I had him. Oh, he was difficult. Well, you could say that. Is that why you took over the interrogation personally? Oh, dear chap, I had one of my best men dealing with him. And in two weeks of intensive work, he got nowhere. And so I took over. The confession took three months. Three months of hard work. <laughs> and now he's free. What did he confess to? Well, we were after two things. A confession that he was publishing subversive literature by writers expelled from the Writers' Union. And we were also after some information on his colleagues. 
What made him change his mind about confessing? We did a deal with him. Light sentence in exchange for information. Which he provided. Of course. That's why we're all so upset about Valera's escape. He could be in danger from his friends. Uh, my department maintains a full awareness of its responsibilities. Then why not arrest them on the strength of Valeri's confession? It has to be checked. It's two months since his trial. Suskin, if you're making oblique references to the efficiency of my department, perhaps I should remind you that it was not my department that allowed him to escape. Because it's absurd that my department should be responsible for prison camps, and yet our most dangerous criminals go to sanatoria controlled by the health ministry. Perhaps I could see this confession. Hmm? Well, I don't see why you shouldn't see our file on Venere. We'd better go down to Central Records and dig it out. There's about 200 hours of interrogation tapes there, if you want to listen to them. Uh, yes, if I may. Right. Well, I'll just shunt this fellow into a siding and we'll go down. We'll have to get a pass issued to you first. If you'll just keep your head steady for a few seconds, please, and try not to smile. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll just fill in the rest of the pass while we wait for the photograph. Uh, will Mr. Suskin be looking at other files, sir? No, just the Valeri file. Purpose of visit to view file number 40557-20. Um, how about the tapes? No, oh, yes, you'd better put down and associated tapes on his pass. Yes, sir. You know, you're lucky, Suskeen. We usually take a month to issue a new pass. Ah, the photograph is ready. Now, you must wear the pass all the time you're in the central records area, Suskeen. If you take your jacket off, transfer it to your shirt. Understood? Yes. Here's your pass, Mr. Suskeen. Right. You must wear I've it all... told him. OK, well, let's go and find that file. What was that number again? Uh... 40557 20. It's along here, I think. Yeah, this place is vast. Yes, there's one file per citizen. Most of them only contain copies of school reports. Even so, 200 million files do take up a bit of room. Mm. I've heard of it, of course, but I had no idea it was this size. Yeah, I once toyed with the idea of microfilming the lot till I discovered it would take about 100 years, <laughs> by which time everyone referred to would be dead. Your filing cabinets at night? You try locking 10,000 filing cabinets every night. It's easier to lock the doors. Anyway, there's always a duty officer around, 24 hours a day. Uh, what were the last two digits of that number? A uh, dash two over. Hmm, 16, 17, 18, 20. This is it. The red tab means that the file is still active. It cross-refers to the files we're building up on his friends. Ah, uh, young Valeri, male, born Warsaw, 1935. Parents, refugees, came to this country in 1939. His parents were prominent party members in their own country. And they worked on our Polish broadcasts during the war. A degree in economics, editor of several university publications, unmarried. Arrested April 1972... Charged with the publication of material by himself and persons unknown, which insulted the government and peoples, etc., etc., arrested in the university library. You think all that might help? Oh, yes, I think so. Oh, um, I'd like to hear those tapes, please. Well, let's go over to one of the booths and I'll show you how to work the playback computer. Bring the file, you'll need it. What's the playback computer? Oh, oh our pride and joy. All the interrogation tapes in the library are stored in a central computer. All you have to do is to sit in a special booth and you have something like 60,000 tape recordings at your fingertips just by pressing buttons. <laughs> Before we had this system, investigations used to take ages. Here we are. This booth should do. That's right. Now you sit at the console. Yes. There's paper in the drawer there for notes. Now then. Turn to the back of the file. Mm -hmm. That list is a brief synopsis of each recording made during the interrogation sessions. And the number in this column is the acquisition number for each tape. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is to select the tape you wish to hear, punch the number out on this keyboard, and the tape will be played over that speaker. And that switches this booth through to the computer. Ah, it says standing by on that screen. What tape would you like to hear first? Uh, the first session you had with him. 
Right, I'll just punch out the number, like so. And that's all. You have to give the computer a few seconds to locate the tape. Ah, hear that? Mm -hmm. Any second now. Huh? Good morning, Jan. Take a seat. I've not seen you before. What happened to the other one? You see that? No. Thanks. Who are you? Oh, just another cog. But a bigger one. <laughs> what makes you think that? You wear a more expensive suit. You smoke more expensive cigarettes. And the guard called you, sir. Well, you are perceptive. If you ever get up... There you are, Siskin. You could stop, play back, or advance the tapes with these controls. I think you can manage. Well, it seems simple enough. Right. Well, then I'll leave you to it. Oh, um, could I see you tomorrow? I may have some points I'd like to go over with you. I should think so. But I must go now. You have a friend coming to see me with a replica of Stevenson's rocket. A, a, a missile? No, the world's first steam locomotive. Hmm. Let's, let's try this one. Mm -hmm. I've told you. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Have some coffee. I don't want your coffee. What time is it supposed to be? You have a watch. Watch. Oh, yes. Miracle of science. My watch. What do you mean? My watch. It's now been running for three days without winding. It's odd. Jan, listen. I'm the only one left you can trust. Even your watch is unreliable. I'm your only friend now. You? A friend? Your so-called friends are lying about you, young. I refuse to believe them. But others might. Others more powerful than me. Believe me, Jan. I want to help you, but you must help me. It's the only way we can fight them. We must fight their lies with your truth. Let me sleep. Sleep. I don't care what they're saying, whoever they are. But you must care, Jan. You must care about yourself. I care. Hmm? I don't want to see you convicted <coughs> on the trumped-up charges based on the evidence of those who don't have the right to call you a friend. All I want is sleep. Sign here, Jan, and we can both get some sleep. Sign here and you've beaten them. They're out there, Jan. They think they're safe. I've heard them. That fool, Valeri. We can say what we like about him to get out of trouble. Just a few strokes of the pen and we can sleep. Warm. No one to disturb us. Just sleep. Long, long sleep. Feel this pen, Jan. Feel how light it is. It's nothing, is it? Just a little piece of plastic. Try drawing a line. It's so simple. As simple as writing your name. See how easily it writes. It's odd. Hmm. Try drawing a line. It's so simple. As simple as writing your name. 
See how easily it writes. Hmm. A little piece of plastic. Try drawing a line. It's so simple. As simple as writing your name. See how easily it writes. Mr. Suskeen? Mr. Suskeen? Hmm? Oh, oh hello. Uh, you startled me. Oh, I didn't mean to, but I have to check a date given during an interrogation session. All the other booths are booked, and my section leader asked me to ask you. Uh, if you, you... you want to use this booth? Yes, uh, certainly. It won't take a minute. Oh, I've come to the end of these tapes anyway. At least I think I have. This last one seems to end rather abruptly. Perhaps there's something wrong with it. Shall I try? Ah, uh, yes, if you would, please. Which one were you playing? The last one on the list. <laughs> Let me sleep. Sleep. I don't care what they say. I don't know, it's on a bit. <laughs> Try drawing yes. a line. It's so simple. As simple as writing your name. See how easily it writes. Hey, you see? It is a bit odd, isn't it? Would there be any more tapes? Only these on the list. Have you played them all? Well, no, most of them didn't seem important. Except this last one. I'll take its number if you like and have it checked. No, no, it doesn't matter. Now, tell me, where would I find a copy of the confession and trial transcript relating to this file? Aren't they in the file? Well, no, they're only mentioned, but there's a cross-reference to another file. Oh, really? Let me see. Jan Valeri. Oh, I see. What? It's just that the confession and transcript are in a separate file. Yes, I had worked that out for myself. Perhaps you tell me where to look for it. Is is that the number, uh, LA49906? Yes. The LA prefix stands for limited access. Hmm. I don't think you'd be allowed to see it. Why not? Why not? The L.A. files are kept in a separate registry. Only heads of sections are allowed to see them, and they have to get each other's signature on the requisition form. It's a form 822 available from room 897. God, what a performance. It's the system. All right, then can you get me this form? Now, look. Look, you see this signature on my pass? General Nero himself. Now, he's taking a personal interest in this investigation. Do you want me to report you to him? But you don't understand. What don't I understand? The L.A. files... What's your name? The L.A. files? They don't exist. Don't talk such rubbish. It's true. The L.A. files don't exist. Then why have them numbered and classified? Well, it's the system. Suskeen, I want a word with you. What about? I understand you've been bullying one of my girls about the L.A. files. Is that correct? Yes. Jan Valeri's confession and trial transcript. I wanted to know... I don't care who or what it refers to. I showed you the file you could use. What was wrong with that? It didn't include a transcript of Valeri's trial. You've no right to go poking your nose into affairs that don't concern you. How could seeing the transcript help in finding out how he escaped? I could only answer that after I read it. Listen, Suskeen. It was because of your department's inefficiency that Valeri was able to escape in the first place. We've done all we can to help with your inquiries. This is how you repay us. Very well. But I don't see how seeing That's his... just the trouble you don't see. Well, I'll tell you what I see, shall I? The sooner my department gets control of your sanatoria, the better. Even after we've secured convictions, it's not the end of the story. We often need access to your inmates for questioning in relation to other crimes under investigation. And your doctors deny us that access. They trot out feeble excuses such as the, their patients are not fit for further interrogation. That's not my concern. Our doctors are granted reasonable independence. They say that new inmates have often been inhumanly treated by your department. And from what I've heard of the Valeri tapes, I can well believe them. Give me security. Immediately. Your pass, Suskin. Ah. Hello, security. General Nero. I want you to revoke visitor's pass number 8745 from 1350 hours. If the holder hasn't surrendered it by that time and left the building, you must carry out a full intruder surge category A and place him under close arrest. Is that understood? Thank you. 
Here's your pass, Suski. You have precisely five minutes to get your things and get out. I specifically told you not to upset him, Sir Skeen. There's been a flurry of memos between Nero and the central executive with copies to me. My head's on the block and it's all your fault. I'm sorry, sir. It's no good being sorry. The whole future of this department is in the balance. My only hope is that we can salvage something of our reputation by finding out how Valeri managed to escape. Nero is going to have some pretty nasty things to say about our efficiency at the inquiry. Which will produce a neat smokescreen for his own inefficiencies. Nero inefficient. How? I don't think Valeri did confess. What? I'm certain his trial was a sham, if indeed there was a trial. What makes you think so? The fact that I couldn't get hold of a transcript or a confession. For the simple reason that there was no trial and there was no confession. But Valeri received a light sentence because he confessed. No. No, Nero did the next best thing. He fixed a light sentence so that Valeri's friends would think he had confessed. It served two useful purposes. Firstly... There was a chance that it would frighten Valeria's friends into making a wrong move. And secondly, it covered up Nero's failure to obtain a confession. Which is all very interesting, but I can't see what it has to do with Valeria's escape. Ah, but at least we know now why he escaped. He probably thought he wouldn't be free for long, just long enough to get word to his friends that he hadn't betrayed them. Well, he could have written to them. Ah, Nero thought of that, remember? He contacted the sanatorium governor direct and told him to stop all Valeria's letters. I think you're building too much on flimsy facts. All the evidence points to a confession by Valeri. The best piece of evidence would be the confession itself. Now, where is it? And another thing. Valeri didn't betray anyone in over 200 hours of interrogation. They used some pretty nasty methods, too. Hmm. So, what do we do now? There's a suggestion in my latest report. Well, I didn't take it seriously. Neither should you. Why not? Well, it's a crazy idea. Absolutely. It's never been done before. All the more reason for trying it out. I'm responsible for everything that goes on in this department, and I'm certainly not prepared to accept responsibility for the consequences of your harebrained schemes. Supposing I went ahead with it while under suspension. If anything went wrong, you could produce my suspension notice and deny all knowledge of my activities. If things turned out according to plan, we could forget the notice and uh, you could take the credit. You really think I could accept such a scheme? You don't have to accept it. You will have no knowledge of what I'm up to. I've uh, typed out my suspension notice. All it requires is your signature. You can keep it in your desk until needed. The idea is sheer lunacy, Sir Skeen. I can't possibly permit it. Why not, Governor? I even went to the trouble of arriving with an armed escort. I'm sorry, but I can't allow you to mix with the patients. I only want to mix with one. No. You have no choice. All the papers are in order. I prepared them myself. The warrant says you are to be committed for an indefinite period. I'm prepared to remain here until I find out how Valeri escaped. You'll be wasting your time. Whatever method he used, he kept it to himself. I'd like to share a room with Dansky. <laughs> Impossible. He's been moved to another room with another patient. Then move him back again. Well, what if I refuse? I'll have you relieved of office. The department has given me a free hand. I shall take the matter to a tribunal and plead gross interference by security. What have you to hide? Hide? Oh, don't be absurd. Why should I have anything to hide? Why should you object to accepting me as a patient? Because you are not a genuine patient. According to those papers, I am. The patients will recognize you from previous visits. I don't suppose shaving off your beard will fool them. Why not? It fooled you. And you've always seen more of me than the patients. It only needs one patient to recognize you. It'll be all over the place in five minutes. Gossip is a fine art in here. I'm prepared to chance it. Well, I'm not. I don't want to upset our routine. Another escape would do that nicely. There won't be another escape. If I found out how Valeri did it, I could always try it out myself. That would be interesting. Then I take it you agree. Well, as you said, I have no choice. Besides, I'd like to see you match your wits against Valeri's. Why the long silence, my friend? Oh, thinking... Oh, it does no good in this place, brooding all day. You must find something to occupy your mind. I can't paint. Neither could I, until I learned to treat colours like words. The difference between writing and painting is not as broad as you might think. The colours have to be of the right strength, placed in the right place, in the right sequence. 
What were you thinking about? Oh, how much longer I'm likely to be stuck in this place. It's strange how prison can fulfill man's basic needs. Food, warmth, shelter, human companionship, and even solitude. All that matters in the end is that there should be companionship. Don't you agree, my friend? All I want to do is escape. Escape from what? This place is only an honest version of the outside world. The walls may be cold and grey, but at least you can see them, touch them, focus your attention on them. In here, you know what your boundaries of freedom are. Outside, all is vague. I prefer a vague outside world to this. Your sanity is a most precious possession. You have a duty not to torment it. My duty to my sanity, as you call it, tells me I must escape. Or at least try. You know, you remind me of a friend who shared this room with me. He was desperate to escape from the day he arrived. Jan, dear Jan. Jan? Jan Valeri? Yes. You've heard of him? Oh, only gossip. That he managed to escape. Oh, is that what they're saying? If only they knew. Knew what? Uh, 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 do you think the sky is too dark? Uh, perhaps a little more white here. Knew what? Yes, I think more white. Look, you must tell me, how did Valeri escape? Or is it all right, is it? I, 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 no, steady, my painting. Please, what, what are you doing? How did Valeri escape? You're tearing my smock. I, I, I'll tear you if you don't tell me. Tell you what? Uh, you're hurting me. Are you going to tell me or do I wring your neck? Oh, my friend, you, you mustn't raise your hopes about escaping. It's impossible. Valeri managed to. Oh, you've smudged my painting. All right, I, I'll tell what little I know. If you promise to give up the idea of escaping... We could get on so well together. I want to know about Valeri. Well, before he came here, Jan was having an affair with the governor's daughter. What? What's the matter? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, did Valeri tell you this? Oh, I knew already. She came to see me before Jan was arrested. What for? What for? Uh, to take away the manuscript of a book I'd written. A book? She told me how Jan got to know her for that specific purpose. Despite that, she was very fond of him. Yes, of course. The governor must have had uh, quite a shock when he discovered her letters to Valeri forwarded here. Jan never received letters. That doesn't mean they weren't sent. Oh, I suppose not. What happened to him? Well, one day, the governor sent for him and... Uh, well, that's the last I saw of him. And you kept quiet? Yes. Why? Well, for the simple reason that there's no one here to listen. Unless you want to spread gossip. Didn't you worry about him? He was your friend. What good would worrying do? I... Where are you going? I'm going to escape. Yes? Agent Prokop to see you, sir. Who? Oh, yes. Send him in. Come. Patient Prokop, sir. Ah. Come in, come in. Let's sit down. Uh, see if we're not disturbed, please. Yes, sir. Well, Suskin, I was wondering when you want to see me. Enjoying your stay? I found out about Valeri. Have you indeed? Well, I think that calls for a drink. No, thank you. Well, you don't mind if Go I... Go ahead. I now know the truth. Well, you are a clever fellow. Cheers. What did you do with the body? Oh, really, Suskin, what did you do with the body? You sound like a cheap melodrama. Well? Well, as I don't know what body you're talking about, I can hardly answer your question. You murdered Valeri when you discovered he implicated your daughter in his activities. Hmm. Well, that's a fascinating theory. Do you have any more? Or did that one exhaust you? I'm returning today to question your daughter. Meanwhile, I'm placing the matter in the hands of the police. Well, why should they be interested? They're always interested in murder. Who said there'd been a murder? A careful search will reveal that. Oh, I see. You'll search West Berlin, I take it. West Berlin? Why? Well, that'll be the best place to look for Valeria. 
What are you trying to tell me? That Valeri didn't escape? I'm not trying to tell you anything. I thought you knew all the answers. Don't play games with me, Governor. What do you know about Valeri? He married my daughter in West Berlin yesterday. Married her? And now I'm beginning to see. Excellent. Let's drink to their future happiness. What are you doing? Calling head office. I'm sorry, Suski. You're not calling anyone. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to make a call from the outer office. Now, please don't interfere. Please unlock this door. Rule 45. The governor must ensure that the door is locked on the outside when interviewing patients in his office. I believe you wrote that rule, Suskin. Aren't you pleased your directions are carried out to the letter? You forget I am not a patient. Really? My word, there must be some mistake. Let me see now. No? No, there's no mistake. Oh. Here's the committal warrant for one William Bruchhoff with an excellent photograph of you. And the papers are signed by a chap named Suski. But you know... Uh, perhaps you'd like to peruse them. No, thank you. It seems I'll have to wait until and I... And here's another interesting paper you ought to see. I am not interested. But you should be. It's a letter I've just received from the central executive. Oh, well, I'll read it anyway. In accordance with the government's administrative rationalisation policy... Oh, I like that... The chairman of the central executive has approved a plan by the Department of Justice to transfer responsibility for corrective treatment sanatoria from the health ministry to the office of the state prosecutor under the direction of General Nero. Yes, sir? Uh, have this man returned to his room? Yes, sir. Just think, sus I, I mean, Brukov. Just think what a splendid security manual you can write now. Written with inside information. <laughs> In Rules of Asylum by James Follett, Suskeen was played by Vernon Joyner, The Governor, Manning Wilson, Nero, Francis de Wolfe, Dansky, Cyril Shapps, Suskeen's chief, Brian Haynes, Jan, James Beatty, Anna, Caroline John. The restaurant manager, Godfrey Kenton. The librarian, Betty Huntley Wright. Alex, Neville Jason. Interrogator, John Chalice. Zoe, Rosalind Slater. And the archive clerk, Diana Bishop. The play was produced by Margaret Ettel. <laughs>